Okay, so let's go for this last session of this conference. Um, so my name is Aurélien Pupier, I'm working at Red Hat, and I'm developing Java code on Eclipse uh, plugin for all my careers for now, uh, mainly, so uh, almost 10 years. And so I will provide some feedback on writing on a new language server. Um, given the fact that uh, me and uh, the other people in my team are pure Java and Eclipse plugin developers. So what we expect from this talk is really to know how to get ready to start uh, your first uh, language server or to, to know what are the things to improve to help others to start writing language server. Um, so the example that we have is about uh, Apache Camel. It's, it will be a, it's a case study. I will show you uh, quickly what we have done um, in a few weeks of, of work. So, um, yeah. Uh, uh, who knows Apache Camel? Okay, I will just explain uh, a bit. It's some parts. Uh, it's not um, very important to understand everything about this project. This project it's just that it is a project, an integration framework, so it helps to communicate uh, between different uh, software. And the idea is that it reacts to events, and you have a, a, a route uh, which is uh, telling how to handle this event, how to uh, modify the data, and uh, send uh, communicate to other software. Um, no need to to know more. So what we have on the language server side is uh, on uh, the textual side of it. So for that, uh, we have, you can define um, so the, the camel root that uh, I've shown bef just before uh, with XML. And each component on points uh, is, uh, is defined with what is called the camel URI. And at this place, uh, it is really important to provide help for our Camel users, so it's really uh, the language server is mainly focused to just this single attribute. But it's really important because when, um, in fact, there are more than 200 components, so it's important to have the compilation. And each of these components has uh, can have hundreds of parameters. So having uh, the completion uh, really helps to, to get faster for our developers. And so, yeah, so here you can see that uh, based on the language server, we have the completion uh, in XML uh, root. You have it also the also same with what is the, the Java DSL, and you will find the camel URI at the same place, and you also have uh, the completion at this place, uh, working exactly the same. And so thanks to the language server, we were able uh, to provide it uh, for the Eclipse desktop. We were able to provide it also um, for VS Code. So it's not only um, completion that we provided, but also some uh, validation, uh, as you can see. Uh, and um, also some Hoover, there are few other features, but uh, to get started, uh, the focus of uh, my talk, it, it was the first feature that we provided. And so it was, we were able to provide it also uh, in the XML, in VS Code, and also in, um, in Eclipse. So everything uh, is based on the same language server, and we are able to provide it to different IDs. Okay. Um, a bit more around the context, so I explain what is Apache Camel. So we saw that there, there are two different uh, languages that we, in, on which you, you, we want to plug our language servers. Historically, we have uh, some graphical tooling uh, based on Eclipse. 
So it is uh, what you see at the beginning, uh, the graphical view of the camel route. And our users were, a lot, not all, but some users, uh, a big part of users were asking uh, more help uh, when they are doing directly textual modification uh, of, the, of the camel route. They didn't want to use the, the graphical way. Also, the graphical way is working on, only for the XML, so they wanted to have some more support uh, for Java. And another important point was uh, that it was an Eclipse, and some developers just don't want uh, to use Eclipse or just want to use another ID. And so that's why um, in the community, they started to provide a pro uh, textual completion in IntelliJ as an IntelliJ plugin, but the code was, is not reusable at all, but other ideas, and it was only uh, yeah, providing an answer, a partial answer to all uh, users. Uh, it was only for the people which were using IntelliJ and wanting textual DSL. But the idea is really to have the textual D DSL for everybody, whatever IDs they are using. So for that, um, the language server protocol is here, which is promising uh, to be working in, in a lot of ideas and so that you can use it uh, everywhere. You write your language server one time and it will provide in all ideas. So the first thing is that we started to write uh, the server. For that, what is really cool is that you can choose uh, the language that you want uh, to write the language server. Um, the communication is done uh, with JSON RPC, but um, uh, so, so you can really choose uh, the technology that you, you want. As we were Java and Eclipse plugin developer, we chose to write it uh, in Java. Uh, it is easier for us. So we started to search for examples. Uh, to write a language server. And when you start to search for it, uh, you will find mostly TypeScript uh, language servers uh, initially, but uh, don't abandon. You will find some Java examples, um, mainly around the, the Eclipse community. The keyword that you need to know is LSP4G, which is a language server protocol for Java. And from this place, you will be able to find uh, examples and how to, to write the language server uh, in Java. So, few other tips uh, when you start writing your server. So first, go to the LSP4G project. Then, um, yeah, we wanted to try to keep it uh, as simple as possible, the language server. And even if we were Eclipse plugin developers, we thought that, okay, if we want to have the community involved also to this project, we should try to avoid to, to provide Eclipse plugins uh, and Eclipse instance for the server and try to keep a, a little jar. In Apache Camel community, they are all doing Spring Boot stuff, so we chose a Spring Boot. Something that is, uh, if it is possible uh, in your domain, uh, you should really try to start uh, to provide some uh, some help in your language server only when um, uh, in a single scope. I mean, uh, when you receive just one file, are you able to provide some help just based on this file? If it is the case, uh, if you can at least uh, do a part of the of, of the completion for just based on, on a single uh, file, it will really be easier to, to start uh, your language server. Um, it is possible to have uh, a bigger scope and uh, start to have um, projects in, uh, in the background, start to have the class path dependencies and so on, um, but uh, it's far more complicated. Um, and I would recommend to look to uh, um, GDTLS if you are in Java world, uh, if you if you really need that, but if you can start without it, start without it. Another useful option is a text document sync kind of full. Uh, it means that on each uh, um, 
on each requ request, it will send the full uh, document, so the whole file uh, for which uh, you will provide some help. Uh, it can sound a bit crazy at performance level, but it will overdue to uh, maintain, uh, to receive all the notification of the, of the modification uh, that are done in the editor and reconstruct uh, everything on the server side, which is possible, can improve performance, but uh, it is adding complexity at the beginning. And the, another thing that is important to note that most of the time, your language server will run uh, on the same machine than the, your language client. Um, so it's not a big problem uh, to, to send the full, uh, the full document, unless you are dealing with gigabytes of documents. But uh, if you have even one mega uh, of size document, it, it's not a big problem. And as you are also most of the time uh, uh, running on the same machine, uh, you can communicate with the client, just implement the system in on system.out. It is a faster way to, to implement it, and uh, uh, it works perfectly for most use cases. Even now, we are still using that. Um, and yeah, just when you're using system out, uh, just think to log nothing on system.out. So no debugging using system.out, no, no logger on that. So yeah, based with uh, these little tips, you, you will be able to, to write your language server uh, quite fast. And after, uh, so, we were able to, to do it quite fast, and we, we provided the, the language server file to our community, and we say, hey, you can try it. And in fact, in each IDE, you can use this language server, but it requires to launch it, to configure some launch configuration, some preferences, some um, whatever. And what happened is that absolutely no user uh, was ready to do that. Uh, they were saying, no, it's too complicated. Uh, we, we can't use that. So when you write a language server, if you want uh, it to be used, in fact, you will need to provide um, a client part uh, on the ID for, for each ID that you want to support. Uh, otherwise, the user, perhaps few of them, but uh, almost no user will use your, your language server. And here comes a bit of trouble, uh, because it means that you will need to write in different languages. Even if it is a small part for each client ID, uh, it is in different languages, different technologies that you, you will need to, to enter. So, yeah. So we say, OK, we need to write the ID client. client. And so, we started with the Eclipse desktop ID. Uh, why? Mainly because uh, we are Java Eclipse plugin developers, so it's really easy. We know how this model is working. And there is a, a clean API too. <laughs> we also provided for VS Code. Um, the language server protocol is coming from uh, the VS Code community first. So VS Code is kind of de facto reference implementation. So when uh, your language server is working correctly inside VS Code, you are almost sure that uh, you are implementing uh, correctly uh, the, the protocol. Also, it is one of the trendiest one. Uh, when we were trying to, to ask uh, some users to, to try our uh, language servers, uh, when we say, okay, it is available in Eclipse, people that were already in, in Eclipse were ready to, uh, to try it, but people that were not in Eclipse say, no, I don't want to install Eclipse, it's too easy, it's too, I don't want. But for VS Code, they say, oh, okay, even if they don't have VS Code, they say, okay, I will, I will install VS Code and try it. Uh, it's mostly a matter of perception, but it is what happened. <laughs> And also, we do it for Eclipse, um, and so OpenShift.io, which is 
productized version of Eclipse. And yeah, it's, um, it was really something important because this ID is web-based, and so we were able to make the demo between one desktop application and web-based ID, and at this part was really important to convince uh, all product managers and also the community that, okay, the language server is really interesting because uh, we will be able to address really different ideas and uh, different types of, of population. Also, uh, it is written in Java, digital asterisk that I will explain uh, after. But yeah, so we choose this three one, um, but I would recommend you, uh, yeah, listen to your existing community. If uh, for your language, everybody is using Emacs and NeoVim, okay, let's start with them. Uh, don't start with this one. If there is no preferences, uh, I would recommend these ones. Um, we hit quite the same uh, issue with uh, the ID part than with the, the server part. It is that uh, we first created all the binaries uh, and the update site for the user to, to install uh, the language server. And uh, in fact, there were some of them which were ready to, to use it, but for instance, in VS Code, it was uh, a binary file that you need to put in a specific folder. For Eclipse, it was uh, the update site that you need, to, uh, you need to copy the URL and put it in the wizard and so on. Uh, but uh, most of the user, again, says, no, uh, I don't want to spend time even for that uh, uh, to, to try uh, the language server, your, your plugin. So we had to, to go to create all the marketplace integration for VS Code, for uh, Eclipse, uh, for Chi to have it directly available. And yeah, just you will need to, to plan some time for that. Uh, this is really something that we didn't think at the beginning, but uh, you will have to create different accounts and different uh, communities, and there, they have specific terminology, specific build. Uh, nothing is complicated, it's just uh, they are not using the same terminology, so it's sometimes hard to follow the documentation. One thing that might help in the future uh, is that someone in uh, our team I started a thesis uh, to generate uh, some uh, the client's part. So the idea will be first maybe just to generate uh, the skeleton and some readme to, uh, yeah, to, to help uh, to learn all the terminology, uh, the spe specific terminology. And yeah, the idea will be to, yeah, to lower the barrier of generating uh, this ID part, this client part. So a bit more detail for each ID now. On Eclipse, the keyword is LSP4E that you need. Uh, it's LSP for Eclipse. It is uh, the project which is providing uh, the client uh, interface and uh, um, yeah. it's providing uh, yeah, some stream connection provider where you will just have to launch your process and, uh, and that's all you will have your language server started. Um, you will have to provide just the content type association to say, okay, with this file, I want this language server activated. So really easy to configure. Um, one warning is that your language server is working only, uh, by default, is working only in the, what it is called the generic text editor. Um, so all language servers are contributing to this one, but the problem with that is that uh, historic editors like uh, the WebTools platform XML editor, the GDT editor, are not uh, supporting um, natively the language server. So we had to create a yeah, to, to bind us to the normal uh, ex uh, extension points of a WebTools platform editor, of, uh, of a GDT editor to have completion inside. Uh, the normal uh, XML and Java editors. A bit more, more work. When we will have some client parts based on language server for XML and GDT, it will work uh, 
Perfectly. Yes, the question. Yeah, I yeah I will open a bug, <laughs> but uh, I didn't follow up on this one. Yeah, an announcement request to be more precise. <laughs> I open an announcement request to be more precise. <laughs> um, yeah, so just when doing in Eclipse, you also have. Uh, your remote debug capabilities uh, easily. For Java, you have access to the communication log between uh, the client and the server when de developing. Uh, you can configure it in some preferences. Uh, so during the development, uh, it provides some help. That's cool. The next one about VS Code. So the first thing to know is it is in TypeScript. Um, so when we are a team of only Java and Eclipse plugin developer for a long time, uh, when you start TypeScript and you start directly with uh, a framework like VS Code, it's not completely trivial. Um, but uh, yeah, it's manageable, uh, mainly because uh, the, the, yeah, one of the hard part was how to handle the launch of Java uh, from um, from TypeScript and check that there is Java available and so on because you might not have it. So you can have a look to the GDTLS uh, client example and now the camel one uh, to know how to, to handle that. Also writing a test is not completely trivial because you need to use the VS Code uh, framework, uh, test framework. So it's a bit like when you are starting executing development and you need to uh, to do some uh, PD uh, tests. Okay, it's, uh, it's not uh, impossible, it's just more complicated than simple uh, unit test. And also in VS Code, uh, be careful. If you write bad requests and standard out, your language server will stop working uh, silently. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, for instance, uh, in our case, it was we were catching an exception and logging uh, using the logger. And by default, the logger was configured to, uh, to write on, the, on system out. So it was crashing for, for that. In uh, Eclipse development, uh, by default, uh, it's writing in, in files and so on. So that's nice. And, and yeah, just this is something we were not accustomed and a bit surprised to, to encounter. They are also providing uh, tooling to help development. They have also uh, logging available to, um, yeah, for all logging for the communication between the client and the server. And they are also providing an LSP inspector um, in which you can filter by types of requests. Uh, you can filter by, um, yeah, you can really see client and server, uh, what they are exchanging, uh, the data, and so on. So when you are starting to have big, uh, big requests, it is interesting to, to use th this one. I will talk about, so it is, these remarks are for J6, which is the current version. Uh, with J7, it will be a bit different. I will come to it just after. So J6, which is still current for a few months. Um, so the first thing is, it's quite easy to write, uh, to write it. It's few lines, uh, few lines of code. And there I, we had great report from the J developers. I said it again, but it is, uh, I will say it again, it is web-based, so to make the demo, uh, having the web-based and the desktop uh, was really uh, making, it, it was that, that, that was making the wow effect uh, to, uh, to product managers. Uh, yeah, with J6, it is not specific to, um, to language server, but uh, to all extensions, it will require recompilation. It's not very easy to test. 
Um, so, yeah, you also have to plan some time uh, because the development uh, run trip is, uh, is not very fast. A little thing, so they don't have uh, a marketplace, but they have, you, you are providing the extension directly inside the code base and you have options to, to activate uh, your language server. So for that, either you ask your users to go to this uh, preferences, or you can also provide some specific, uh, what they are calling chase stack, and they choose it, and uh, you will have, uh, you can pre-configure the, the language server to be activated. For chess even, um, so you will be able to write, uh, still write your extension directly inside Chess 7 uh, but it will be uh, no more in uh, Java. But on the other hand, we don't really care because in fact, uh, we will be able to reuse the VS Code extension. So as you have already written uh, the VS Code extension for the language server, you will be able to just register it uh, in uh, Eclipse and it will reuse it and it will be available. So in case you are not in the URI, uh, you can wait a few weeks or months. Uh, I really recommend to, yeah, to, to wait and do, do it uh, just for VS Code and it register it for J7. And if you are, uh, if you want to try, there are some branches that are already working uh, for that, more or less. They are uh, starting to implement uh, what is missing, but uh, uh, it is already working for XMLLS, for instance, and uh, for Camel, uh, we started to, to have something that is close to work. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention that before. Uh, <laughs> for the language server protocol, what you have to know is that this is something that is uh, quite well known in Eclipse uh, ecosystem, Eclipse community. It's quite well known for people that are doing uh, tooling uh, development. But when you start to, to talk about that uh, to people that are not in this ecosystem, they, are, they don't know about it. And when you say, oh, you, you, writing once and it, will be, it can be supported in all these ideas, um, they are just saying to you, no, it's, it's not possible to have uh, this large scope of feature to that all ideas agree on. So <laughs> you really need to, to make the demo to really show that uh, it is working. Um, otherwise, the, yeah, I, I wasn't able to, to really convince people that it's possible. And yeah, some key points during development, which uh, allows us to, to move faster, to have more time allocated to work on that, is yeah, uh, having uh, all the potentially supported ideas uh, uh, yeah, visible and, uh, and well understood uh, by everybody. When we had a demo for one desktop, one desktop ID and one web ID, uh, it was really something uh, appealing for for people, and also, yeah, when we started to have the marketplace entries, we started to see uh, people uh, trying trying it, uh, starting to report few to provide uh, a bit of feedback and so on. So yeah, now we have some few hundreds of installation. So uh, it's uh, not a lot uh, on one hand, but it's quite a lot in few months. And yeah, it's, it's really a matter of a uh, few work weeks, if you are full-time on that, uh, to have several IDs supported on a very small language server. What you need to think is that you need to plan uh, to, the, to bootstrap the time for all uh, wanted IDs. Uh, this time you will have to, yeah, to take the time at the beginning of the project, and, uh, but after, you will continue to, when you will continue to work on your project, you will add feature on the language server and you won't touch it anymore to the, to the ID part. 
but it is a boots right time, which yeah, uh, at the beginning of the project, yeah, it's not very friendly. A few words of what's next when you started, yeah, all of that. Uh, so the, for now, there are still some questions on uh, cross-language server. So it means when several language servers are providing um, are providing content for the same file. Uh, I mean, when there is completion, it's all relatively easy because uh, you can just add the completion from one language server and the other, that's fine. But uh, for formatting, for instance, if they are both providing some format uh, on the file, which one uh, need you will take on the client side? How to, to know this one? There are these kind of questions to to answer, but yeah, that's fine. And also, in cross-ls, it's also meaning how to, to not uh, redo the same thing uh, in your language server. Uh, so I, I said, if you can start with a single file scope, uh, that's very convenient, but if you can't, you will need perhaps some class paths, some dependencies, and maybe another language server is already doing it and you are just adding a few extensions, so how to leverage it uh, without <laughs> being uh, bound to it, or not too much, um, not easy. Other protocols uh, that can be useful to know to go further, so it's a debug adapter protocol, um, so language server protocol is for the edition and debug is for debugging. Uh, your, your files, there are some uh, draft for graphical server protocol also to, to have some diagram rendering um, that could be convenient using the same, uh, uh, yeah, the same concept. Also to create a new project, there is nothing uh, uh, generic. There are several tools that are available like Yeoman or Maven archetypes and so on to, to start to work on a project. It would be interesting to, to have something more generic. And also on the IDE client, if we can get rid of uh, the time to bootstrap all your IDE client and have something a bit more generic, maybe use a Docker image, and if all clients are able to, to launch it and, and be bound to it, so it means that you, can, you are able to chip only one, uh, one thing just for your language server. Or have a language server marketplace which will be able to manage to launch different kind of, uh, of language server, perhaps Java, Node.js, and a few of them, or use a client generator to, to generate it automatically. Uh, food for thought. <laughs> so I hope that uh, now you will start writing your own language server if, if you're not already started. And... Uh, Time for question. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Um, it is a development which is done really on. Uh, and the J side to be able to consume uh, the VS Code extensions uh, directly, and there is no effort that I know <laughs> uh, on uh, on the Java on the desktop uh, ID. Any other question? 
Okay, so thank you for listening, and don't forget to provide feedback. Thank you.